Hi guys, today I'm going to be assembling the Voron Flex Extruder. This is my second attempt at this video. Um, you may notice, first off, this is this is a bit different. I actually made some changes to Max's original design. Um, I wanted to use a BSP 16mm groove mount Bowden adapter instead of the standard plastic one, which he recommends, which I have no experience with, but I have two of these lying around, so I'm going to use these while I have them. So I just whipped this up in Tinkercad, design your own, trust me, I'm a terrible designer right now because I have no professional experience, uh, because I'm 17. Um, so let's get into it. These are all the parts as specified as the, in, in the design files, except for this, which is a, this is a stand-in for the uh, McMaster car component because I don't like buying things that I already have, and this gets the job done. So this will be our uh, ball bearing mount, I believe, is what that's for. Alright, so let's get into it. First thing you're going to want to do is you're going to take your Nina 17 separate motor. As far as tools are concerned, I have calipers, I have a uh, number one screwdriver, that's only because these have number one heads because that's the only one that uh, my hardware store has and they were a dollar fifty there and like five bucks on McMaster car plus shipping and I wasn't going to do that. So um, that's all I needed. Uh, you also need a Mark 8 drive gear and this. Um, miniature ball bearing. Again, these are all on the ball. Also, PTFE tubing. You're going to start by taking this component here and clipping it there. It should be quite tight. It's quite well toleranced for that. Then you're going to lay this on here. Like that. Um, first, you're going to take one of these. Okay, so you're going to take the crescent moon and put it on here. Next, you're going to take this tension arm and you're going to put one one of them like you're going to put yeah, you're going to put them like that. One right there. And you're just going to let that sit there. Then you're going to take this and you're going to you're going to set it down right there. All right? The main body. Uh, then you're going to take this component, this tension arm, and you're going to set it right there. And you're going to thread in the 3 mil. this is a M3 screw. Okay, so basically what you're doing is you're making a sandwich, this part on top, this lower arm on bottom, um, with the spacer joint. And then you're 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 pulling that all together with this screw, and you're threading into the motor right here. Uh, you do you you do want to be careful though, because these motors they they the the frame is made of aluminum, and aluminum is a very soft metal. And I'm using stainless steel screws, which means that under extreme torque, they will strip. And when they strip, they turn into useless motors because you can't attach them to anything. So you do want to be careful um, with that. The motor has captured that and there we go. You want to make sure these can move freely. Um, this one obviously will be a bit more tight um, just because it's wedged in between these two and not the air. Um, let me get this a couple there we go. Uh, all right, so next thing you're going to do is you're going to take this straight piece and you're going to lie it like that. And you're going to set this aside because we're not going to use it for a little bit. Um, all right, so now this is the, the idler. Um, like that. 
So in the bomb, it specifies a certain DAO pin. Now I mentioned earlier that instead of a DAO pin, I'm going to use this. And I will show you that it will clearly work. Um, don't quote me on that. So what we're going to do is we're going to set our calipers for 3 eighths of an inch. Because that's, well, it's what is in the design file. Let's move this up here. I'm going to place that like that. And I'm going to take my Sharpie and I'm going to come along. And I'm going to make a mark at 3 eighths of an inch. Now I'm going to take my pliers. You're going to want sharpened ones. One, ones with a with a sharp uh, piece, or alternatively, you can use flush cut shears. I got these on Amazon; they were the most popular ones out there. Um, anyway, you're gonna want to make sure that the flat side. There's always, no matter what, which one you're using, there's always going to be kind of a more wedge shaped sh side and more of a flat side. And you're gonna want to point the flat side inward. And you're just going to cut that in half or at your mark, and that is going to slide into this this groove right here. Um, yeah, this groove right here. I need a pointer, something to point with. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to slip your ball bearing on there, and it should be. It doesn't need to be taut on there, in my opinion. Others may differ. Okay. Once you get to it, you may need to trim this a little bit. That's no big deal, though. That's part of the reason why I'm using golf tee as a material. I have plenty of it, and it's relatively malleable, which makes it easy to use. Next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to kind of get it stuck in there one way, wedge it in there one way or another this is kind of hard to see but just just get it in there just get it stuck in there somehow all right and then you're going to want to take it and put it down on the table and it should be held in there quite firmly you can do that and you can see that the ball bearing is floating in there nice and freely all right Okay, so now we're going to take this screw and we're going to start to thread, again, this, this top plate, this straight bit. We're going to make sure it's aligned. And then we are going to... Whoop. I'm going to start a drop counter because I like to drop things when I'm, when I'm tinkering and building things. We'll speed this part up. Give it one last crank down, make sure we're all set. And we're going to this idler, which should have the ball bearing in it. So this idler, make sure these are, just move those out of the way for now. And we're going to take this are going to thread. Um, so I've, I've done some experiments. Right now I'm actually threading into the plastic and at first I thought, oh well, that's pretty weird how if you over extrude, you know, you can actually thread metal into plastic. And then I wondered how strong it would be. So I did some tests and it's actually really pretty strong. And so it, I've incorporated it into some of my designs and I, it's, it's worked out so far. Um, right here, I, I thought about doing the plastic threads, but I, I went with the bolt, though I probably could have, could have done that. That would have been a, a perfect chance to use that strategy. Um, yeah. Alright. So. After okay, so this is a critical juncture. Uh, make sure this this ball bearing. Make sure it's facing inward, or you're you're gonna, you're gonna 
gonna have a bad time. Sorry, I'm blocking the thing. Um, okay, so right now what I'm doing is I'm lining this up. And I'm lining the hole in there up. And I'm creating a hinge right now. And that hinge is going to prove crucial. Because that is where this design gets it, its beef. Okay, so next crucial juncture. We have a Mark 8 hobbed gear. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna just ever so slightly take that, take this, and just pull it out just a little bit so that it's loose. And then what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take the flat side. So we've got, let's get something of a different color. So we've got, this this shaft this is the motor shaft you have a a thing you have a thing right here it's the flat side you're going to want to rotate that flat side so that it is parallel with this bracket so that this is facing outward you're going to rotate that around all right then you're going to take this and you're going to don't do it like that. Make sure the uh, the teeth are facing downward. Make sure this bolt or this this grub screw is accessible. So you're gonna drop that down in there. Mine is a bit larger than. Okay, we're back. Um, so basically, you're gonna want to drop that, that that hobbed gear in there, and then you're you're able to flip that in there. There's teeth on that gear, and you're gonna want to make sure the teeth on that gear match up with the ball bearing. We're going to call this the ball bearing. We're going to call this the gear. We're going to call this the gear. This is from my lampshade. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to, let's say this is your ball bearing. We're going to call this right here your teeth. You're going to want to make sure those match up. Otherwise, you're going to have extrusion problems when you're printing with flexibles or when you're printing with PLA if it's bad enough. Okay. So that is quite the, quite the little extruder there. All right, next thing you're gonna do, I'm impressed with that. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're going to want to take your final piece, this is the last piece, and you're going to want to put it in this. And you will notice that you printed this in ABS, which means it will sag a little bit on top. That, in my opinion, is a good thing, because that means this hole is super tight, which means that it's going to be hard to put this in. But in my opinion, that's a good thing. So what, because it means that it will be difficult to get it out. Um, let me make sure this is lined up. Okay, we're gonna zoom in on this this action right here. So you're gonna line this up like so, and you're gonna take this, take your pliers, and you're going to clamp down as hard as you can around, and you're gonna wanna press on it, and you just wanna you wanna get it in there, and you wanna get it nice and taut in there. You you you, you don't wanna be able to have it falling out on you. Um, just, you know, do whatever it takes to get that. You're just going to want to do whatever it takes to get it in there. Um, so that's that's your M4, M4 hole right there. Um, M4 screw. Alright. 
Next thing you're going to want to do is you're, you're going to want to thread in your M3 screw there. And then you're going to want to take this this piece, which is which is the latching bit um, for the for this door, and you're going to want to close this, and you're or you're going to want to open it. Sorry, and you want to have it in the open. So you're going to want to have this in the open position, and you're going to want to you're going to want to tighten that bolt down. Are you talking to yourself? No, I'm filming a video of assembling this uh, this extruder. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, my father, he just gave me a scoff. He's walking away. He's a life coach. Edit that part out. There you go. So there, there's your latch. Next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take one of your M3 hex nuts. You're going to want to tighten, 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 tighten that down. There you go. That is latched. Wow. Yeah. So that's that's the latch right there. Um, and you'll notice if if you go ahead and latch it quite stiff. Now, that's where this M4 screw comes into play. And what you're going to want to do is there's a there's a opening here, there's an orifice, and you're, you're going to again thread that in there. And this this is going to be your tension adjustment. Um, and this this piece here this this M4 will press against the uh, the body, and it will either reduce the, it'll reduce the tension. Um, so you'll you'll do that, and then you'll you'll notice that it's it's pressed it away, and that that makes the the body less stiff. Um, so that's that's kind of the tutorial on how to use this. From what I can tell, obviously this is all speculation. Um, I, ho I hope I'm speculating properly, obviously. So let's go ahead and I'm going to undo. So I've got my Prusa sitting next to me. Okay guys, so you have now finished the flex extruder. Everything should be assembled properly. Um, one thing I may not need to diagnose on mine is this, the, the golf tee isn't working out, so just be fair warned, the golf tee, depending on the size you use, may not work out, so go ahead and get that thing from McMaster Car, um, which I hate to say, but whatever. Anyway, the last thing you want to do is you're going to want to load the PTFE tubing, which is going to go down into this. And then once you're all set, you can clamp this. And then you have a quite robust design. Ooh. Okay, so that is the Voron um, Flex Extruder. Uh, just a quick note, uh, when this is... The more this is this is out, the higher the tension. I've noticed um, this on this clamp. If you if you draw this this nut out with a screwdriver, um, it's it's on less tension. So just keep that in mind. So this is this is maximum tension for me, um, which I'll probably leave it set at unless I'm using flexibles. So there you go. Um, if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. I'm probably going to make another video next week on a end-to-end -end bed without any obtrusive um, bolts that, that limit your printing area. So be sure to catch that. Um, great, thanks.